All right, guys, so we're going to make a quick video to show you what to do once you put your cams in and you're off a tooth to kind of explain a little bit about what that looks like. We're always installing and pulling the chain taunt on the non-movable side first, wrapping around, and then going to the other cam. We're going to see that we're... You, there's a whole bunch of play in here. When you turn this and you try and go backwards, here's our uh, top dead center mark, and then our engine mark is where the paint, or our alignment mark, I'm sorry, is the engine case here. But bring the video up here. And what I was just doing, I want you to watch in here, flashlight, Brock. You can see here, see how much that chain is slapping around here and not doing anything? The cams aren't moving, but I'm moving that crank all over the place. Yep. And that's a lot of times what goes wrong. So. Come, I'm going to push on the tensioner with my hand as I move, do any movement here, okay? Because look and videotape in here. Watch what happens when I move this around. Can you see the tensioner moving back and forth in here? Yep. Okay, perfect. Now come back here. If I don't put some tension on that, what's going to happen is I'm going to jump cam timing. It's just going to make it even worse. So my goal is to do this. I'm going to, we're, we're just snugged, we're not torqued. I'm going to go ahead, put my finger on the tensioner, and I'm going to go way beyond where I want to, where I want to go. This direction of this engine is clockwise from the right side here. Now I'm going to take, holding my finger here, that's the important part. So you know I'm doing that, and I'm going to get down here, bring the camera back down here, and I'm going to get holding my finger on there, I'm going to pull this timing mark into place. What that did is remember all this slack up here? Yep. It pulled the slack tight from here and moved the cams around and now we have a tight chain from here to here. If I move this around and don't have that slack taken out, my cam timing is going to be off. I just want you guys to think about this. You know, we're videotaping this, and if you look at this from a professional point of view, what you're going to notice is that why in the heck are we even rotating this motor with the cams in place and the tensioner out? And you have to remind yourself that what's happened here is the technician has installed it wrong. It's been off a, off a tooth, and they're having to fix a problem. Realistically, if in a perfect world, what happens is the service manual says top dead center, particular cylinder, pull the cam chain taunt on the non-movable side, install that camshaft, which is usually almost always an exhaust, but not always, and then uh, wrap it around the chain and, and you know do this and this and this and this. And what's happened is people miss a step or they they don't stop enough to check and go wow while I pulled that chain did the crankshaft move around on me a little bit there's just such a direct relationship to the crankshaft to engaging that first sprocket as you continue on if you skip that step it doesn't matter how much how good of a job you get the intake and exhaust cam time to each other it's going to be off and you're going to have to be starting over and you're going to be right where we are right now. So keep that in mind that the only reason this engine is being turned at all is because we're fixing a problem. Um, had it been uh, worked out right the first time, we wouldn't have to do this at all. All right, man, I'll tell you what, I have been wanting to make a video like this for a significant amount of time because this is one of the big struggles of what do you do? This is gonna be your great comeback to video if you get out in the field or you, uh, mechanics out there watch that when you just cannot get these timing marks to line up. So this, this motor creates a couple unique opportunities for us. Um, number one, let's just focus in right here. And what you could see is that, does that arrow look like it's slightly pointing down a little bit? We're gonna start here talking about our alignment mark. And what I like to do is I just like to take a, a common straight edge and use this and it looks like our arrow, and it is, it's pointing slightly down. Back the camera out and you can actually see, let's go right there. You can see that it's not perfectly, let me get my finger out of the way, level with the head. It's it's slightly down, right? Yep. Well, this is, the problem we have as a, as a technician out there is we're doing a valve adjustment, doing some type of freshen up of the engine, is 
we got to know if our cam chain is stretched. Okay, we're perfectly lined up at our T at the bottom right now. The problem that we have is sometimes to change a cam chain can be really expensive. We got to know if our customer are they going to be willing where they were supposed to be doing, you know, just a, a valve adjustment or something or a head gasket and saying, well, now we need to sometimes split cases. If we're not willing to put a master link in this, we're talking about splitting the cases to change this cam chain. It gets super expensive. Oh, yeah. My recommendation is if cam chain stretched, it's stretched. You need a new one. But you can't get everybody to have that same understanding. So the realistic world is that we have to think about what we're going to do that's going to be best. Now, my choices are I could take that arrow and I can, let's get focused tighter again. I'm going to switch to a, a pointer here. That arrow fits in between these two links. You can see where our paint mark is. Let's go up a little bit. Perfect. Right there. Outstanding. Now, my, I can only move that up between a set of pins or down between a set of pins. That's it. Those are my only choices. Because remember, we got sprocket teeth in here, like back here. So my sprocket <clears throat> has to engage in that. Here's how I like to determine what to do. With this motor being at true top dead center, I take a couple of straight edges and I'm going to do this. I'm going to place one here and then if I take a look and try and you can back up a hair. If I if I take this like so, see if I can do this for the video, and I decide to go up a tooth, I just go to the next sprocket. This gap here is excessive, right? It's not like we're talking about something like this with a little bit of stretch. If I put that tooth and gauge that sprocket into the chain here, I am definitely going to be off on my cam timing. So this is how I like to look and determine whether I'm in the best spot. The other thing that will change a little bit, if you do an overall view of this, we don't have our cam caps on. Once you tighten everything down, once I put the tensioner in the motor, this stuff can tweak around a little bit. I'm going to use this photo a couple of times, but I just mentioned tightening the cam caps and putting your tensioner in and that things will move around a little bit. It's a perfect example of why you should always rotate the engine at least two or three times, bringing it back to that original timing point, rechecking everything, and verifying your work has not moved around on you. Okay, so there's your tip of how to determine whether you want to change that sprocket or not. I'm going to go ahead and show you real quickly what that would actually look like. See how I moved it up one tooth and it looks like I'm way above the cylinder head? Yeah. And then as I do this, make sense? So there's the actual part of it. I'm going to go ahead and move this back. And that's going to be my best position. Here's a picture of what it would look like with a non-stretched chain on a perfect example where the number one there is horizontal with the cylinder head. We're gonna give you another little treat in this video and get you guys think about something. Man, I'll tell you what, Brock here uh, is really learning. Oh yeah. Man, when we were doing this, we were really struggling. And with these being motors we use in class here, this Allen bolt is what holds this rotor in place. And what I was noticing is as we were turning the engine is that this was moving but the engine wasn't. Can you see that? Get a real good close up. As close as you can on that. I'll switch to this end just so you can see. That bolt will not move and you see how the rotor's moving. Not good, huh? So we decided to investigate. We decided to take this apart Check it out. Is that rotor any good? No. Right there. Look at that. It's oblong. Something happened. It was left loose, probably, and vibrated when it ran. We really have to look at the pin on the crankshaft and try and determine if there's any damage on it. And we, we'll look at the sides. Go ahead and uh, we'll back up for now. We've, we've definitely got a problem that how in the world are we going to find top dead center on this thing? That's going to make it a big struggle. Brock's going to go to the other side here, and he's going to turn the other side of the motor over for me. And I'll show you a couple things that we used to determine 
what was going to be best for this. Very carefully with clean tools, we're going to set this screwdriver in here. Now I'm going to put a little pressure under step to this side on the cam chain so I don't want it to jump all over the place. Brock, you go ahead and you're going to kind of rock back and forth. Go ahead. And you see the screwdriver going up and down? Yep. Okay, so what we're also doing is I want you to focus on here. Go ahead, Brock, and go back and forth. Do you see how that pin's moving around? Yep. Okay, slower, Brock. Tap forward. Okay, now what we have is that pin happens to be the top of the connecting rod. We could take an everyday ruler. Can you get this all in the picture here? I'm just taking something like this, a long straight edge. Since I'm done messing around up here, what I want to do is, can you kind of see where there's this casting, a couple marks right here? Yeah. I'm going to take and use this. I'm going to line this up across here. Go ahead and get a close up in here now. Brock, go forward. Okay, stop, go back. Tell them where, Tyler. A little more. A little bit. Right there. Okay, back up with the camera. Look at what we've done here. We've really found top dead center. Now check this out. Had we had the right, you know, uh, when we get our new rotor, this pin is, is the perfect line through that. Where did you guys learn about that earlier this year? The GCBs. The GCBs, do you remember that? Where the keyway meant you were straight up and down. Pretty cool how they make this stuff match up. Tyler, get close in here. Okay, so we know we've lined this pin straight up with the motor, like so. I'm going to set this back in place. We know it's damaged. We'll get a new one coming. And then what you can see here is that I'm straight across here for my marks. Make sense? So now that we know true top dead center, that we're perfectly having the crankshaft at the right place, it really helps us determine what to do here. This sprocket that's pointing down just a hair means it's a stretch chain. There's another procedure in the service manual that tells you to measure from one uh, number of pin, from one pin to a certain number. So it's 19, 20, 21, 22. Then you take your veneer caliper and measure that distance. That'll also tell you if the chain is stretched. Here's a real quick recap on this engine. The Suzuki GSXR 1100, you put your T-mark lined up horizontal with the engine case, wrap the chain around the non-movable side, making the number one horizontal with the head, continue to wrap around from the number two pin count, or number two indicator on the camshaft, count 22 pins back, line up the number three mark on the intake cam, wrap around, install your cam caps, tighten up your chain tensioner, and then ultimately... Uh, torque everything down and let's not forget that step of turning the motor over a few different times uh, Going back to your original timing marks and re-verifying nothing's changed Hey there, uh, you know this this is a tough one to teach for entry-level tax We do it pretty early on though because we're doing a lot about tool usage and theory of uh, engines and we get this four-stroke class. They just had a lot of success. I have a two-stroke class so the confidence is pretty high and we get into this and I really uh, tend to have to fight that close enough or good enough mentality and, and not because they don't want to, but it's just a lack of understanding. And I think that's the big problem with a lot of, a lot of uh, technicians or hobbyists out there. So you just understand this part's critical. And what we have to think about motorcycle engines is that if this is not set correctly and sometimes we can be off a tooth that if we did fire up that engine, there's no clearance for the valves and they would end up ultimately hitting the piston. Some there are, some there aren't. It just, it's not worth the risk. And uh, so we really just don't get that option to say that, well, it'll be okay. I mean, this is very precise work here. I mean, uh, you got to know, uh, even if there's people that just have an interest in this, and you got to realize that these technicians are very skilled when they put this together and, and they're looking and inspecting all these different things. There's a lot to it. So I just wanted to recommend that you... Uh, um, really be diligent with your work and and not cause these problems to where uh, even if there was the slightest bit of clearance, uh, we have to realize that the motor is not going to perform at its optimum, not only for performance, for gas mileage and all kinds of things. So anyway, happy wrenching and I uh, hope this was useful for you.